of this production is the last piece in the, in the solo section. It incorporates sign language and was made by an Austrian composer, Baron Baron Feinert. Now let's talk about the silence of dance, the power of pure movement, sorry. When you see a bird soaring into space, it can leave you breathless. The flight is not accompanied by background music. When you watch a horse with its long legs and streaming torso galloping th th through the field, moving toward the horizon, you admire its strength, beauty, and flow. Perhaps you hear the rhythmic impact of the hoof, but there's no musical accompaniment. Why then do we expect music when experiencing the exquisite, sometimes strange, but always expressive human body moving on a, in a dance? Well, this evening we won't. You will all be asked to revel in or contemplate the sensing, thinking, moving bodies performing for you on stage. Accept, feel, experience. This is the opportunity we offer to listen, see, and hear the music in and through the movement. There is also a, 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 there's a slight, slight change in the program. The first piece done miss, will be Missing Two with Nedjla Yatkin. The second piece will be No Testament by Andele Novo. The rest of the program is as printed. Enjoy.
It's time for some sound other than clapping. Good evening again. Um, we're going to talk. And my first uh, conversation is going to be with Mira Wolf about the genesis of this program. Welcome, Mira. Um, the dancers will be joining us. I'll ask them a few questions, and then we'll open it up to the audience for further questions. Please. Uh, tell us a little bit more about the genesis of the silence of dance. I promised George I wouldn't do it at the beginning, so now I'll tell you. I attended a performance of the last piece, Signings, at the Austrian Embassy in January. And what I loved about it is that he... The last solo. The last solo, yeah. I, what I loved about it was the, the use of sign language as part of the choreography, the sense of silence of it, because we live in such a world of noise. And then I saw two people there relating to each other in a sort of wonderfully warm, electric manner. And all of a sudden it came to me, we should do a program called The Silence of Dance, using this partially sign language choreographed piece. We would again again fit into our three dancers program, but we wanted one deaf dancer as well because that made sense. And so that's basically how it started. Um, did you have any doubts about a whole evening of silence? Yeah, of course, because I've never seen it before, but as I watched this tonight in rehearsal, I thought, even this long piece is very intense, and it really fits the pattern of the first program we did, which was called The Essence of Dance, where I had three dancers and they were not allowed to have anything on the stage because I was demanding of the audience that they feel the movement of these women. And I think tonight we got to feel the sense of movement of these people. Uh, we'll be joined by uh, the dancers and the choreographer of one of the pieces, Kate Jordan, but uh, the choreographer of the germ piece, uh, signings, Bernd um, Schiffer is uh, not uh, with us. Uh, is Kate here? Kate, come on up. Bernd is with us in spirit. He's been emailing us. Um, but um, I wanted to start off uh, by asking the dancers who have spent really their careers with music. They not only usually perform to music, they also practice to it. Class is done to music. And even when they warm up by themselves, they often put on a recording. So how does it feel to choreograph in silence and then perform in silence? Let's start off with our choreographer here, Kate. <laughs> Thanks, George. Um, well, as a choreographer, whenever I start to create movement, I always um, have, I feel it and envision it um, as, as music itself. So when I heard about this, the theme of this concert and this evening, um, I was really interested in taking on the challenge, but also recognized that it was also kind of way I already felt like I was working. Um, I'll put on a piece of music to inspire maybe the start of some, some movement that comes to me. Um, but then after that, I'm, I see the rhythm that the dancers are playing as I create the phrase of movement. So, um, but music, um, music is really one of my biggest driving forces in the impetus for starting um, new, new movement phrases. Um, I usually start from a musical movement side, and then also from a theme and idea side, and along the journey of the process, they meet in the middle. For me, this process was very liberating because oftentimes music guides you. Even though sometimes I start 
without music with the concept, but then once I have the music, the music usually kind of dominates the feeling and the rhythm, but this was very liberating because I was the one that created the rhythm with my breathing, with my heartbeat. I could feel my breathing, I could listen to my heartbeat while I was dancing and um, hearing myself stepping and turning around, so it kind of was very liberating as a dancer to do it without music. Well, um, when I started this uh, project with uh, Mira about silence and dance, um, she said to me, there will be no music. And the answer that I gave her was, I, I'll, I'll enjoy this because I love dancing without music sometimes. But um, the whole point of the no music and understanding that there is no music and you find that you move, actually your movements are made from music where I listen to music all the time. I get most of my movements from music and that way from there I move on and start creating a story, start creating my picture, my sculpture. But without music, I had to be silent and sit down and imagine, imagine something that I was not. And the way my first solo, which is No Testament, was about a little boy or a man that has no structure or background and that's needing help or needing a way to get out of that closed cell and the way he cannot, and he still cannot. So. Music, uh, dancing without music, and the silence, um, it's, it's almost like a, a bird, a butterfly, a butterfly. Um, growing up, um, I used to follow the movements of the butterfly and it was very, very quiet and you could, you could actually see um, things in nature running and watching the movements of the butterfly and that in, in itself was music so in a way that was a challenge for me uh, growing up to follow their movements and I experienced that. So uh, without music uh, the challenge uh, for me was to really look inside of myself and, and feel my heart beat and to know that the movement there uh, inside of me, I could bring it out. Uh, I'm going to be a bit of an immoderate moderator and uh, defend music. Uh, I really don't want to see a lot of dancing without it. But uh, given music, uh, the relationship of movement, of dance to it, can vary greatly. Uh, it can be a dialogue between the motion and the sound. Uh, the music can be used as background, as it sometimes is in the movies. Or one can Mickey Mouse, as in movie cartoons. And I'm wondering, uh, when you people use music, how do you prefer to use it? Well, it always depends on the project. Sometimes it's a period project, and you have to look into period music, and then it's more confined in the way you use it, if you use something contemporary and it's more free, then usually I start with the movement and then I ignore the music and the music becomes background and gives an atmosphere to what I create. Um, when I use something like Bach, it's very strong and it's very scientific, so I have to create a piece of dance as strong as a piece of Bach music, otherwise you can't use Bach and ignore it on stage, so. Uh, 
Um, I respect music a lot. And the fact that music is not just music, it's also another artist that's creating music. So you have to respect the artist with the music that they make for you to dance to it. It's like um, doing ballet to hip-hop music. It does not work. But um, I feel that that's how you have to find your inner creativity to use the music to your best ability with the way you understand it. And when it comes to silence, it's, it's where you as an artist grow and create your own movements and musicalities in your head. Um, I think I, as a, when I'm choreographing, um, I usually prefer to work with a composer who is creating music um, and creating the score for my piece at the same time as I'm creating. So it's a back and forth dialogue um, about the, the aesthetics, the ideas that are driving the piece, um, the movements that are driving it, or um, ideas that the composer is taking back and forth with me because it gives both of us the liberty to create the structure for the piece in a tangible way throughout the process. Other times I do really enjoy um, taking a piece of music that I've fallen in love with as a piece of inspiration and holding on to the structure of that music as the, the driving force uh, to help me create and sculpt the piece. And as, as my, my really my favorite music, um, I myself um, do have uh, music that I really enjoy, um, like far, in the forest, uh, different trees of nature, sounds of nature. And sometimes um, I will choreograph um, myself uh, sounds like water. And uh, those, that type of music uh, from nature helps me uh, to move freely. Uh, let me just add one thing. As I was watching this evening, uh, the silence had a sound. I didn't feel it in the very first piece, but as the evening went on, that sound of silence became more distinct, at least in my head. So, questions from the audience, and could we have the lights up in the house and the blinding lights out. You're going to have to speak loudly because the way theaters are built, acoustics go that way, the volume, and we may have trouble hearing you. But don't hesitate to ask questions about any of the particular pieces. Uh, Mira wants to hear the reaction to a whole program of dancing in silence. Right here. I'm curious to know how you reacted to each piece and what you saw in various pieces. Because this really was a lot was left up to your imagination and your vision. Yes. Uh, I just wanted to thank you for producing this uh, this evening of silent dance because I spent the weekend um, supervising the auditions for the choreographer showcase at the University of Maryland. So I spent two days inside the theater watching dance constantly from 10 o'clock in the morning to 6 o'clock in the evening. And for the most part, the uh, adjudicators and I started finding the music to be incredibly annoying. And, for, and a lot of times the music was completely drowning out the dance and, and driving us away from the dance. And maybe it's because a lot of modern dance these days is not very much integrated with music, but the music is added later as a sort of a commentary or something. But then they keep cranking it up so that this, this background music becomes deafening and you can't really concentrate on the dance. But this program was beautiful and it made me think of when John Cage came out on stage and sat down at the piano and sat there for
for 13 and a half minutes and then got up and walked off stage, it, it, like George said, it made you hear the silence and enjoy the richness of the movement. And I was really carried away. I had my doubts, but I have no more doubts. I think it was a very beautiful program. Thank you. Well, um, the thing is, starting with the work is, is hard because you have to balance. It, like me, I had to, because I do ballet and contemporary and hip hop and mm, 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 mm. So I have to put it in my head that this is what I'm going to do and my, my body moves differently from one thing to another thing. In ballet, I have to stay straight, and I have to be a block. And then here, I have to release everything. And the next day, I will feel like I don't dance. I don't dance ballet anymore. So I have to restructure everything again. So it's like a rebirth every time. You have to go back and back and back and restructure yourself and end up being a uh, a well-rounded dancer. It was kind of like I was in the studio by myself and dancing, like not being in a performance, but I was dancing a very kind of in an intimate way in the studio. I think uh, that also for me, uh, dance in deep silence is is the same uh, in the space of it is very very um, intimate very deep and and it is almost like um, pitch black um, the colors of it it's like pitch black um, and I depending on the feeling inside of me again my heartbeat um, and I'm not uh, worrying about sound, the sound of music. Um, I had a really interesting experience working with Ronnie on uh, the one piece of his because for our rehearsals I got to go to the Kendall School um, on Gallaudet campus. Um, some of the students were here today, I believe. Um, but for me to walk into uh, as the deaf school and immediately re-question my idea of silence and my idea of movement um, was uh, quite beautiful because I saw, I heard so much noise and so much music um, through physically through the conversations that were happening in the hallways, yet I really heard no sound as we know it. Um, so even before Ronnie and I would walk into the studio, um, 
was already seeing these these movements that um, I might not have tuned into as in as much detail before, um, and then being able to work with on a solo always um, gives the opportunity to go really in depth with details and with um, a personal story and a personal investigation. So I think that new movements came out of this project for us, both because it was a new working relationship. Um, we're both two dancers that um, I think love dancing because of the physicality of it also, um, but then also by the challenge and the interesting uh, assignment of using new music and um, creating that work in an environment where I was hearing a lot of music in an alternative way for me. Um, a moment, just a moment. I have a question of Nejla. Um, in your second dance, I could see three distinct people, I think. But not everybody may know who Martha, Mary, and Pina are. Uh, could you explain? Martha Graham, one of the um, modern divas, um, and then Pina Bausch, um, German dance theater diva, and Mary Wigman, who was um, um, com came from the Expressionism, um, so she was also one of the first female modern dancers in Germany. And those women were my influences, and um, so this piece was dedicated kind of um, in the spirit of their movements, and a lot of the movements were taken from old photographs, and frozen photographs, and so I put the collage of Mary Wigman, Martha Graham, and um, Pina Bausch into one little piece. Uh, George, when you said uh, the silence, Could you speak louder. Uh, when you said the silence had a power and Neshla, do you want to talk about the process of the improv? I think it's like jazz musicians coming together and jamming. It's like dancers, they know the space, they can feel, they use their peripheral vision. And so you come to, we came together just like for 10 minutes and we said, okay, we'll do here these collages and you go move over there, you go move over there and I move over here, then we come together, and then we do this lift here and lift there. So we had a structure, but in the structure we had a lot of freedom. And then you also kind of respond to what the, each dancer does, like he moves soft, then you move away or you move under. So it's 
it's like a give and take, a dialogue in movement. So. And Mira invited us yesterday and he, she wanted us to talk about it. I said, we are dancers, we don't need to talk about it. We just need to smell each other, be in space, start moving, <laughs> and we know <laughs> what to do. But in addition, we had thought maybe they needed to start with a piece of music so that people sort of relate to each other. And that's when, and as you said, the dancers don't need to do that. And she said what she said tonight. And they didn't need to do it. They did it brilliantly, I think. Uh, in three, you've always had an improv uh, at the three dancers programs and previously they have used music or at least rehearsed to it. Uh, any other questions? Please. Do it that way then. Well, Betty, you are Betty. What made you uh, enjoy dancing? Well, since I, I was growing, when I was growing up, um, oh, my uncle, <laughs> my uncle always uh, ha at Howard University, okay, um, al always um, uh, performed dance there at Howard University. <laughs> and also, um, I used to watch him and I thought that I, I can do that also. I could feel the drums, um, even though I can't hear, I could feel the drums, the sound of the drum. And um, that way, uh, I was fascinated with the, the way uh, that movement uh, happened. <laughs> I, um, it, it, sometimes it was, it was very funny, it was very silly, but I was encouraged. Um, to join as I was uh, growing up and to develop the dance uh, through the feeling. My heartbeat uh, would match the music, and that's how I began. Sometimes music can be very, very, very loud. Sometimes you have to use very, very loud music. Um, can you turn up the volume sometimes and feel the music? Um, yes, most of the times um, I can actually, uh, I, that I do dance to the music, um, I actually, the sound itself, uh, I check, uh, use the sound to check and have a sound check as well and to make sure that the volume is turned up so that I can feel it before I start dancing. Um, but I can feel the rhythm of the dance. So that's how I'm able to present the dance. Okay. Hi. My name is Fred and I am the director of uh, the Wild Zappers. Okay. Uh, recognition for that. Okay. Music um, in the deaf community, uh, we do depend more on the visual. We actually see the music. The flow of the music is actually what we depend on. It's the same as water has a flow. The music has a flow as well. And sometimes it, it it's rustles and sometimes the pacing, but we see the music. We, we don't really hear the music as much as we feel it and see the flow of it in our body, in our body movements. So I'd like to ask you, was it hard for you to uh, really dance without music 
Was it hard? Was was it difficult for you to dance without the music? Okay. Um, glad you asked that question. Um, first, yes, it was difficult um, because growing up, I have always depended on the music. Uh, so that way, I myself would uh, match the the movement to the music. But then. I began to under, uh, to work with uh, and, and realized that I really didn't need the music. Uh, okay, I, I began working with Kate and we started using the music and, and I mean not using music and, and putting that aside and we rehearsed and I myself uh, began to really accept the silence and understand that I did not have to hear music. And then later, I understood, oh, okay, that is really a good thing. Uh, what about the, the, I'd like to ask the hearing uh, people, uh, was it hard for you dancing without music? No, not at all. Dancing with music was actually fun and liberating. You could have your own rhythm and you could feel your breathing, your heartbeat, your stepping, so it was fun. No, not really. It was not hard for me because I relied on my breath, my steps and my movements. My movements made a sound and that way it structured me from one place to another where I didn't, I, I loved the fact that I had the freedom to pull things longer and make it slower and don't have to rush or count it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and just have to not think about count at all, just movement and that just was liberating for me. Uh. If there are no other questions, let me thank again the dancers and choreographers and the audience. Performances like this always depend on the audience, too. Also, the unsung hero here is Jonathan Willen, who is the business part, the co-producer, without him this wouldn't have happened. Would you please stand up for me? Okay. Oh, please, could you stay for just one, one quick second? I want to go and get something. performers uh, with flowers to this evening. So I want to give all of the performers flowers. Okay. Kate, first of all, for, uh, for the work for working with me. Thank you, thank you very much for the hard work. And I want to thank <laughs> Thank yeah. Frankie, who was my critic, who really pushed me. So I want to thank him as well. Okay. Thank you, Frankie. Also, I want to thank. Uh, oh, thank, oh, thank you to the interpreter for showing up. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And last, I want to uh, recognize Jonathan for setting up, setting this up. 
uh, the silence of dance, and uh, for the success of the show. So please come and uh, receive your thanks. Oh, I'm sorry. I wish I had flowers for all of you for coming. <laughs> but thank you very, very much. I love you all.